And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Beyond the 90. Thank you for checking in. Leicester have just drawn away to Burnley 1 1. Um, we've got Rich, Alex with us as per usual. So thanks, you guys, once again. Rich, over to you. What are your initial thoughts of the match and wh where do we go from here? Um, initially, I was, uh, I, I, still, I still think I'm disappointed because I think we should be beating Burnley, to be honest with you. Um, I think. Hopefully that goal will give uh, Inacho a bit of confidence because you know that was a that was a that was that reminded me of the West Brom goal for Jamie Vardy. Um, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but there's still a lot of there's a lot of concern. However, I still think that that is not there's nothing that Brendan can do about that. It is to do with the injuries and things that I'm sure we're going to talk about. So my initial feelings are slightly disappointed, but to be fair, at least we didn't lose. So you know what? Let's take that. Yes, and and that's the whole point. That, that's what I think as well. Just in terms of what happened, I think it's a great performance. Over to you, Alex. What are your what are your thoughts on the match? Just overall. Overall, I'm quite content with this performance. You know, when you're decimated with injuries the way that Leicester have been, um, pulling out a point is much better than losing. You know, entirely. So. You know what? Especially when you're going up against Burnley. Burnley seems to have our number. You know. Chris Wood always seems to score against us, so we're very fortunate that he didn't score. But, you know, just to get a point out of this game, you know, I kind of viewed these next two games as, you know, if we pull four four points or even if we get two draws out of these next two games, I'll consider it a victory, considering the amount of injuries we've had. So, you know, I'm going to take this as a win for us. It could have gone far worse, um, yes. you know, and – yeah, you know, a point to point. We're at 50 points now in the season. That's fantastic. Yeah, totally. And oh, I didn't even know we were on 50 points. Again, that, that is probably good news. Hopefully, depending on if other rule results go our way, but I think you're right. I was surprised that Brendan Rodgers didn't make more substitutions and more, not some more substitutions, more changes to the team. However, I think he was being a bit overly cautious. I'm just hoping, Rich, that doesn't come back to bias later. I would have preferred to see Tavares start. I would have preferred, to, I don't want to mm. hype, harp too much on this, but I, I looked at the moment, oh, if any of the, because, for example, Ricardo went down in the um, 70, 76 minute and I nearly cried because I thought I was like, oh no, we can't lose another player, you know, but um, so what what did you think of the initial starting lineup? Because it was a it was basically can you can you play in that position? Okay, you'll you'll fit, you'll do. Just cram, cram yeah. everybody in. It was I, the problem is so uh, hindsight is brilliant. Obviously, you know hindsight's twenty twenty, etc. It's one of those that let's say what I think he was planning on is right. Let us let's make sure we get to half time sixty minutes nil nil. I think that's what he was planning. And then let's bring on the likes of Tavares. Let's bring on these players that are going to, you know, put the energy on, which they did. You know, they changed it. My, Mark Albright changed the game. Let's be yes. honest about this. So, so he, I think that he had that plan to go, right, let's stay, let's, let's keep that defensive structure. Let's keep safe. Let's try and stop Woods, you know, a Woods scoring. Um, and let's just go in nil, nil. And then when we're ready to bring on these substitutions, let's change the formation and let's really go for it. Unfortunately, we conceded after three minutes and then it was all of a sudden, it was like, oh, damn, we've got all these defensive players on and, you know, no real spark moving forward. And it took a wonder goal from Ian Acho to, uh, to get us back on. So yes. I think, to be honest with you guys, I think Brendan Rodgers is damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't. Because if the plan had worked, if we, let's say we're looking at this now and it had gone, obviously I don't know the plan, but let's say it was the plan and we get to nil-nil at half time, and then 60 minutes he makes those three substitutions, we go on and win it one nil. We're sitting here going, what a masterclass. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, a player that's not scored in however many minutes suddenly finds his scoring boots and Hamza plays a ridiculous pass. And it's just, it's one of those things that it was a culmination of events that led to that goal. So, he is damned if he does and he damned if he doesn't. No matter what he does, there's a thousand fans on Twitter kicking off at him. So he can't win even if we win because then they're still saying, well, we could have won by more if we'd have played under and if we'd have played Tavares at the start. So, um, yeah, it was. I think, I think, like I said, I think he had that plan. Unfortunately, it didn't work. But, you know, when you've got Premier League players passing it directly to the opponents, attackers, what what can you do? Because that you cannot put that on Brendan Rodgers. And you also can't yes. put it on injuries or, um, you know, tired legs. That's a genuine mistake that, you know, happens every few games. It just happens. 
Yes, and, and I don't want to harp on him for too long because, again, people have mentioned already. Um, I've already been called out to the fact that I'm going to defend Hamza Chowdhury. Um, <laughs> normally I would, um, but thanks for the comment, Ant, but I, I, I can't really defend that. He was, yeah, I, I can't really defend the majority of his performance in that. In that. It was, he wasn't good enough. It, mm. it's, it's disappointing because I know we've seen there's a, he's a talented player in there, and I, but it seems to be one every five performances he really turns up. And if he can get that consistency there, I think that's what we're all asking for. We all demand. But in that first half, Alex, I think the team, one word I've got is deflated. It wasn't as bad as the second half of the Arsenal game. However, there was, I think uh, Rich is right, there was a plan to get to nil-nil at half time. But, but by charge giving that ball away in the first four minutes, for the fourth minute, I mean, it's going to turn the game on his head. And the fact that they got into the game and by half time they got in at 1 1. That must have been a great feeling for them. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And you know what? I don't want to harp on you know Chowdhury as much as you know some people have because you know he didn't have a good game. And that's that's plain and simple. You could see it, we watched it, we witnessed it. Game's over. Let's move forward from that. But one of the things is that the um the pass that he gave up on that ended up turning into the Burnley goal, it reminded me of when we played Manchester United in the final game of last season. And it was him again. And that's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's what it reminded me of. And it just it just seemed like a, like he just stopped thinking. And, and that's unfortunate, you know, and you got to move on from that. And, you know, he had the op- opportunity uh, early uh, later to uh, tie up the game, and he ended up booting the, uh, the ball right into the ground. You know, so you have that. But, you know, players have bad games, and you just got to look to that, and, you know. Hopefully, you know, next game you can shake it off. Um, but, you know, I think you got to give it to um, to the boys because they're able to really compose themselves, you know, falling one nothing after, you know, four minutes. You know, I think mm-hmm. anybody would be clicking the panic button. I know everybody on Twitter was. So I can imagine them on the uh, on the field, you know. But, you know, they, they were able to compose themselves and, you know, Nacho got a fantastic goal. And, you know, that yeah. really gets the monkey off his back because, you know, he's, you know, I think that one of the biggest things is that everyone's been, you know, really dragging on him. And we know how Nacho really does play. He, he plays on confidence. And that's one of the types of goals that will just boost that confidence, which is key, especially with how Vardy has really just disappeared over the last few games. So, you know, for them to be able to really move into halftime square even i think it was perfectly executed you know after you know the first four minutes you know the fact that they were able to come back and then move forward from that is just perfect um and like i said before you know getting the point out of this game i'll take it better than a lot totally agree i totally agree i think um just coming from this now just i want to go back to the kelechi nacho goal i think again kel's goal was crucial but again that goal when it went in, that was that was rich. I just have to we just have to spend some time talking about that because that was a sensational goal. Again, he didn't do too, he did a couple of other good things in the game, but this will be the thing that will be talked about the most, and rightly so, in my opinion. Well, I mean, let's be honest. If that's if that's uh, Haaland or Messi or Ronaldo, it's talked about for years to come, and um, <laughs> you know, just like it wasn't when Vardy did it, it, it was uh, it was incredible. It was that it was that good. So, like as I've said several times, my girlfriend's not interested in football whatsoever. She was sat next to me on a laptop doing some work, and I literally slammed shut the the laptop thing, and told her to watch. Like she, she lost her mind at me, but I was like, I, just, I was like, you've got to watch this. And she was like, what? I was like, you've got to watch this goal. I was like, look at this. I was like, it's so difficult. But honestly, um, yes, Diego, I'm preaching. You, you're welcome. Um, it's um when it's, you have a goal like that you have to pray for sure yeah <laughs> i think he was i tell you but no it was it was incredible it was an absolutely incredible goal the technique the thing is what and this is what i said to, to my girlfriend i said he just made that look easy i said you don't realize how difficult that is he's yeah. just made that look easy which is incredible so um yeah and his first touch by the way is is incredible i think he's got yeah. one of the best first touches in our team Unfortunately, his second, third, fourth, and fifth is usually not as great. So, yeah. But, um, but no, well played, and uh, thank, uh, thank, I'll, I'll thank Jehovah for that one. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we're praising everybody for that. And yeah, yeah. Another thing, another thing at the moment that we're going to get into as well. This is probably one of the highlights, as Glenn has put. So, thanks for the comment, Glenn. Again, no injuries. <laughs> yeah. This is a big thing now that we because we can't afford to lose. If we lose a couple of more players, 
I mean, we are genuine. We what we are. We're putting a hole in that barrel to try and scrape the other side of the barrel because there is just nobody else left, at Alex. But again, playing this many um, teams from the uh, first player t players, and if there was a couple of injuries, it, it could have been a very, very different game for sure. Yeah, and you know what? I was we were I was speaking to James earlier before even the game started, and he said, you know, if this game, if if we draw this game and there's no injuries, fantastic, you know. If we lose this game and we have no injuries, I'll take it. You know, at this point of the season, you just take a game where you go, no injuries, perfect. So you know, the fact that we can say that we draw, we you know, we drew, uh, we drew, and then we you know, we have no injuries is fantastic, um, especially with how it seems. It, every game there seems to be something going wrong, and yeah. my biggest concern right when I saw the lineup was uh was telemans because the last last game he looked absolutely gassed mm -hmm. and i'm like oh he's starting so you, you know my first thought was okay he's probably going to get subbed off and by the 25 minute mark I, I i started noticing that he just he didn't have anything left in the tank and the fact that he played all 90 minutes was incredible to me because you know at just the rate of the amount of time, the amount of minutes he's been playing this season, it's just remarkable. And the fact that he's, you know, remaining healthy, it's it's slightly terrifying. <laughs> yes, know? yes. And yeah. I, they were going to say about there were. I think that he's rumored to be getting a new contract worth a hundred grand at the moment, and rightfully so. I mean, if Slimani's on eighty, I'd have, and he's been taken away. Give that bumper contract to um, yeah. Tillemans today, because again, Richie had so much work to do. Bearing in mind, he's the only out and out person to link the play well again um, um nacho was a little bit but he was the player that was really stepping over right give me the ball i'll try and play other people in and i thought today he was he was fantastic especially in the second half when uh, we'll probably get onto the second the, the substitution that came on that really helps leicester go and right we can go and win this game he was a key player for us he was the only one who looked to a really high level um all the way through there was something i mean diego's just said it there he played his heart out there was there was a point i noticed where the, the um burnley played a crossfield ball yuri was on the side he was actually challenging for the ball on this side the guy played a crossfield ball i think it went over to mcneil and he absolutely sprinted yes. like there was a player in between him and and he went past him and I thought, right, well, that shows the determination, the absolute guts that he has got. Because as Alex has said, he is out on his feet at the moment. But he's the only one that he, his touch was brilliant. He looked like he, you know, there was a few passes that just went awry. But, you know, he he looked slick. He looked dangerous. There was a few, I wish he'd have shot the, I think we all know the point where he ended up oh. back in. I was like, just shoot. And I, I, I was already standing up because I thought he's going to score. And then he just back heeled it. And I was like, no. But, um, yeah, he, he has been... He has been, I mean, if, if James Justin um, was still playing, I'd still think that James Justin would probably be our player of the season. Um, and obviously other injuries have, have just caused several um, issues. But Tielemans is the only one that's consistently looked to a high level, except when he's absolutely, you know, knackered. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, and, and yeah, uh, Anders just said it there. He puts in 100% every single time. So yes. um, yeah, give him a hundred hundred thousand pound contract, not a problem. It just yeah. keep him, keep yes. him. And I'll be his personal car washer. I'll do what he ever he needs. <laughs> Stick it in the contract. I'll quit my job and do it. It's fine. We'll, we'll get there. And then, uh, uh, and also, Rich is asking for a hundred grand a week as well to do that as well. Just if you're watching, obviously, if <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I think there was there was a couple of uh, we've mentioned some good players, obviously with um with. With the likes of, oh, I'm just losing the water. Live at the moment. Come on. Um, with the likes of um, Tillemans, I was going to say Tavares because another comment threw me off. Um, but again, Schmeichel, Alex, today, we can't defend set pieces. We all know that. We can't de set, defend set pieces to save our lives. But one man, we normally say he has one world class save. I've got one in the 37th minute. I was like, oh, there's, there's the world class save order. And then he makes another one in 48 minutes. And I'm just looking there going, if he's not, as you, I think you said, off camera, if he doesn't play, we lose that game three one easily. Yeah, and I've said this many times before, but Schmeichel is world class, you know. And today's just another example of of his of his skill and his determination. Um, you know, he's a leader. You can hear him all the time, just yelling, motivating the players. 
And that's one thing. But, you know, just to come in, you know, at any opportunity and make a world class save it is just, you know, is spectacular to watch. And like you said, you know, without him and, you know, without him and net completely different outcome, you know, we'd be like, you know, we lost this game. Why? Well, you know, Schmeichel we defends up pieces. Blah, yeah, blah. we defense up pieces. We don't have a keeper that can save. But you know, Schmeichel's there, and Schmeichel's been there all season, and he's been one of the keepers, in my opinion, that has not been talked enough. Mm-hmm. Not only with Prem, but I think in all of football, just the mm-hmm. way that he's really—he's so composed. And you know, I think if you remove Schmeichel from this lineup from the start of the season till now we are not even close to having a discussion that we are top four. I think we'd be definitely in the lower tier of this table. And, you know, Schmeichel saved us more than once, more than twice, probably more than five times this season. Yes. Easy. You know, you just got to give him, you know, hats off to him because, you know, even at the age of 34, he's still bringing it. And that's just, that is fantastic. And just a sight to see. Yes, and one thing as well, he doesn't be quiet. They, Andy, thank you for the comment, but um, a lot of great things. It, there's not been a lot of great things, but hearing Schmeichel yelling during the game has been one of the highlights. Swear words and all, to be fair, then I've heard the Sovereign States go, oh, sorry about that, kind of. Like, it's their fault. But I, I, it is what it is at the moment. But again, uh, um, Rich, we just have to stay on um, Schmeichel for a little bit because he's just been insane. Yeah, I mean, Ant uh, just put there, I think the second one was one of the saves of the season, and I think he's got a really good, uh, there's a really good shout out of that, but I tell you, the one that sort of sticks uh, sticks for me, and I can't remember who it was against, but he went with his, so he, he was diving to his left, and he, he saved it with his right hand, I want to say it was against Wolves, but I might be wrong, but it was going, it was going yes. top bins. It was going top bins, no one was stopping that, and he just, somehow, is he just got his paw to it, out of nowhere and i was just like where it was it you know it was just incredible and it, you know we could we, we could go on and on there was I, we were talking about him a few um, post matches ago where we were saying about how he just there was a really close header and he just his hand came out of nowhere and saved it how many times have we talked about his sh- saves and how incredible he's been and let's also talk about his distribution today which was really good yes. there was a couple yes. of times he he sent us he, he sent us away um, you know, he gets knocked for his distribution. There was also, you know, there was um, there was a particular podcast I was listening to a while ago where they were saying that uh, he should be dropped for Ward because his distribution was that bad. And I was, you know, my point was, uh, you know, first of all, that's ridiculous. Um, but also, his saves are worth goals. So, yeah, you know, exactly. like you said, it's three one. Like criticizing Jamie Vardy for not getting back enough. It's like, well, that's not yeah. the point. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, he has been incredible all season. He's probably been one of our players of the season, to be fair, as well. Yes. And um, I mean, they always say, obviously, for a goalkeeper, 34 is their sort of prime. So I'm hoping that he can keep it going for another few years still. Um, but yeah, I mean, what? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one that, as well. That was ridiculous. I swear he's got cement in his gloves for that. That was unbelievable. <laughs> like all the way up his arm. But yeah, no, incredible. Um, and hats off to him. He's been he's been incredible all season. Yeah, he's been absolutely insane. Um, a couple of I'd actually want to bring it on to one thing. As from from a Leicester fan, they've gone. Burnley deserved the win. To be fair, and I think mm. I'm going to be honest. I kind of agree. Not because in terms of opportunities that again if. How many saves did Pope have to make compared to Schmeichel? In that case, yes, we tried. We didn't get as many opportunities away. I wouldn't say that we completely deserve to win. It would be like a couple of points or so. However, Burnley deserve a lot of credit and we matched them the majority of the time, pace for pace. And they knew where we were weak at, which they got the ball wide and they whipped in crosses and they whipped in crosses and they tried to realise that we aren't strong in the air. And a lot of the time, the ball was just falling in the middle. Somebody was just booting it away. So I think... Burnley do deserve a lot of credit, Alex, because they were, I think they were really, really good. They were they were great today, but we equaled them with how good we were. Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree <laughs> with Burnley deserving the win. Now, Burnley was very good at executing, you know, attacking, and, you know, they really maintained and were able to track, you know, where we weren't positioning properly. And they found the holes in our defense. You know, we're very lucky that we have Schmeichel because, you know, like I said, different story if we don't have him. But, you know, we matched in our own way. You know, we capitalized when we could. 
we counterattacked when we could, you know, we ended up scoring. So, you know, at the end of the day, the way I view this is that both teams deserved a point and, you know, the right, you know, result was awarded in a draw, you know, that's, <laughs> that's just the way I kind of view it because, you know, if Burnley scored another goal, you know, then I go, yeah, Burnley just scored, just deserved the three mm-hmm. points. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Schmeichel's there. He makes fantastic saves, you know, keeps the boys in it. And, you know, we're looking at a 1-1 draw. The way I view it is just, you know, both teams played well. You know, maybe one player on Leicester played better than the entire rest of the club. And, you know, that's Schmeichel. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the result is the same as what I think it is. And that's what I expected, to be honest. I didn't expect us to win. I didn't expect Burnley to win. You know, I was kind of expecting a draw. And, you know... Yeah, I think the points were just exactly how the results shown. Both teams deserve a point from this game. Yes, I think I think to to your point, I think we do. The draw was the correct example. However, if you look at the amount of shots on target and things like that, they did have more. Um, so I'm not saying that they completely deserve to win hands down. It was a small, small margin. Um, but just I think uh, as you, as Rich mentioned earlier, the, um, coming over to you, Rich again. There was two substitutions that were made about just before about 70 minutes when, mm. again, Leicester just kicked it into the game. Nacho and Mendy came off, which I was surprised that Chowdhury didn't come off, to be honest. Mm. I was surprised to see Mendy come off over Chowdhury um, because Mendy was, he was doing, he was doing okay. He was, do, he was doing the basics, doing it right. Didn't do anything spectacular, but did things right. So Mendy and Nacho came off and all Bryce Fofana came on. Straight away, there was a, just a change in the team. Part of it was, again, these two substitutions come on. Part of it, in my opinion, was um, Wilfred and Didi going into that CDM role. Um, Mm -hmm. It was just a whole team change, and it's brilliant to see. Ricardo pushed further up on that right-hand side, became a lot more focused in the game. Um, And then Tillemans was being able to play in that number eight cam role that he likes to play more as well. So, again, I think that's, again, from what you were saying as well, it's a really good tactical substitution in order to potentially go and win the game. Yeah, I think um, just... I, I will answer I just quickly to to touch on what you've just previously said and what Alex said there about um, you know Burnley winning the game uh, or deserved to win. Sorry, I think I I do kind of agree, but I also what I think is that let's say Burnley were playing an eight out of ten today. I'm just picking a three. We were probably playing a six. So mm. if, you know what I mean. If we match them on regards to our levels, we beat them all day long. So I think that yes, I, to be honest, yeah, I. Put it this way, I said, and I said to you, Neil, I said, I'd, I'd like it if we snatched a goal. To me, that says that we didn't deserve to win. So I don't think mm-hmm. we deserve to win. If anyone did, I would agree it was probably them. But I think that the, I agree that the, the draw is the fair result. Anyway, to answer your question, yeah, I think it just, it, the change of shape really helped, as you say, getting indeed into that position that he's much better at. Also gave us a lot more overlap options on the wing. So uh, we, we just, we suddenly seemed a bit more dangerous um and i just think that it shored things up for fana just you know thank god he's back by the way uh talking yeah. about knowing that we've also got for fana back so for me it was a really interesting uh, change all brighton just seemed to look 10 years younger he just absolutely was his t- the, the turning is you know he was turning on a on a on a penny it was unbelievable so for me i think that the change of the shape the, the reinvigorated the energy it really helped us and also having that height of Fafana and I'm pretty sure that was a part of it as well because obviously Fafana can he's ridiculous got a ridiculous jump on him and he's also pretty tall. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it just I think it shored up the defence but also gave us a bit more attacking moving forward, even though we brought Ian Acho off, which I know a lot of people have already said, you know, take Vardy off over Ian Acho at the moment. Um and you know, <laughs> it's hard to disagree to be honest with you, because I'm not I'm not convinced by Vardy at the moment. Um, no. But yeah, I think it was it was a really good tactical change, and then bringing on Tavares, I would have liked to have seen him have a little bit more time. But again, damned if you do, damned if you don't for Brendan Rodgers. So, but no, it definitely exactly. helped. Exactly, and again, Dio Cantus is the same thing. Um, I'd like yeah. to see Tavares come on earlier, and I, I I do agree. I think it would be nice to see him come on, but again, that's his first like cameo in the Premier League. Um, but where do you think? Do you think he's what do you think of him overall, Alex? I like him. Like, I, I think he's, I still need to see more from him. Um, mm-hmm. But in order to see more from him, he needs to play more. Um, so I was hoping that he would play a little bit more today. Um, 
you know, I'm hoping that when we play this weekend, he'll have a more of an opportunity to, you know, show his talents. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I was hoping that we would see today. And, you know, when you bring him in that late into a game, you know, he's only warming up. And then by the time he's warmed up, pretty much the game's over. So, you know, I'm hoping that when we do play this weekend, he'll have that opportunity to really showcase and see what we what he can do on a broader scale. Um, but overall, from the little bit that I have seen, I am impressed. Um, you know, he is young. And, you know, I think we need to be patient. And, you know, there's a lot of – not saying it's everybody. There are fans, though, that are like, you know, he's not good enough. It's like you haven't seen him play. You know, he's 19. Give, give the guy a chance. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that – we need to be patient with, and especially in this time where there's so many injuries, you know, mm -hmm. you have to allow these players and these young kids to come in, figure it out, give them time. Because if someone comes on and, you know, and botches something 20 minutes into a game, you can't be like, Oh, he's terrible. Get him off the, you know, get him off the pitch. It's just like, he's, he's 19, you know? So that's one thing just, and then a second thing I just was more surprised about um, just kind of bringing it back to what Rich said, you know, with VAR, I was more surprised that Nacho got brought off rather than Vardy. I will say that, you know, because I think Nacho was our best player on the pitch for most of the game. So when they brought him off, I was quite surprised considering that Vardy seemed like he was a ghost today. I didn't, I didn't notice him. And to say that about, you know, Jamie Vardy is just absolutely mind blowing. So, you know, and I do agree with that. I don't think Vardy is fully fit. I think there's something going on. And, you know, that conversation that nobody really wants to bring up about Vardy, you know, I think the, you know, father time is slowly catching up to him. And, you know, that conversation is going to be, ha is going to happen. It's going to be another day that we're probably going to bring that up. But, you know, I think that discussion needs to start being talked about because we need to, you know, really, we need to come to terms that there's going to be a Leicester City post Jamie Vardy. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation that does not want to be had, but it needs to be had whenever that is. I, I agree with you, and I think that is a conversation that needs to be had. However, just with the current state and how many games are being come through at the moment, that does change things. If we're playing once a week, then I think we see Jamie Vardy rested, come back, and he's firing. For example, when we're playing a lot of the time, again, Ant is just being Ant. We're not, we're not getting Morales. You can't, you can't, I, I can't, I can't criticize anybody for spelling, to be honest. I'll be quiet about that one. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of, in terms of Jamie Vardy, I think he will come good eventually. He will be there, but just the amount of games and the reliance we have on him, like to, to score a goal, because again, Nacho, his decision making is better than Nacho's. He's more of a team player than Nacho in the sense of it as a striker. A couple of opportunities saw, right? Nacho's up, got the whole pitch and there was runners going past both Vardy and um, and Nacho as well, going left and right. And he just had to go right, pick the pass in case he made a shot and it goes over wide. So I understand, but however, that goal was obviously, we will say it again, it, it, it is it is changing. However, I don't think it's easy to write off Vardy now. It's just because we haven't got anybody there to as a like for like replacement at the moment. And it's just, it, it, it's a bit of a shame to see, but there's nothing really we can do at the moment, Rich. It's just... Yeah. He has to play because everybody else is injured. And we've seen before when he is injured, when Vardy is injured, we're all praying for him. Get back and get on the pitch as soon as possible, even if you've got one leg attached to you. Yeah, that, that's the thing. And I think, you know, it is that it's a really difficult situation because even Brendan has said, you know, I was listening to his... Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Ant. You keep it going, mate. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, he, he, you know, Brendan Rodgers said uh, in his uh, in his pre-match interview that he wants to rest him. He really wants to rest him, but he just can't at the moment. And it's a difficult uh, if it's it's a difficult situation. I mean, going quickly just back to Tavares, something that um, you know um, Alex picked up on there, and obviously he's only you know he's nineteen, he's not had enough time. Think back to Harvey Barnes's first performance. Porto yeah. away five nil, we lose. Yeah. You know, if you but he's gone on to be one of our best players. It's you just have to blood them in and you have to give them time. So it's you know he's gonna he's gonna be something special. Let's let's you know hopefully if we can if we can give him time, it potentially is gonna be one of those where he goes away on loan, depending on obviously what happens in the transfer window. I doubt it for a while, but he might need a bit of game time elsewhere because and, and, and pointed out that he's brilliant in the 23s but as he says it you know it's a big step and you know couldn't agree with that more 
Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah, exactly. Um, he he he's an absolute. He's going to be an absolute baller. Um, but you know, just going back to your point about Vardy, it is a difficult situation. It, it's one of those you go, oh, maybe if he just gets one. It, also, he's not getting the service that he would like. You know, mm-hmm. there has been a few instances where he's been through, and like I said, I've said it on this podcast a few times now that I would, you know, that he's missed chances that I'd put my house on him scoring. You know, he has missed prime Jamie Vardy chances. Yes. However, I think he just needs one of those. He needs a through ball that he's, you know, he's run onto, although he looks like he's lost a yard of pace, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, popping it through, scoring, and then it's like, okay, there we go. There's the body we all love. Um, and also, I, th- I do think that having him in the team meets, makes the opposition set up differently. Yes, so exactly. there is also that to consider. So, you know, and he, you could- he brings more than just goals. You could, you could. I was listening to another part again as you were saying. List of, I was listening to another one regarding Jamie Vardy as well, and having a look at the strike, the English strikers at the moment, and um, the the issue with Jamie Vardy is well, it's not a major issue, but towards the beginning of the season, he was on fire. Six of his twelve goals have been through penalties. Yeah. So if you look at it that way as well, he's not actually been as in, as amazing in front of goal as we would like as well. Again, he's popped up with vital goals again in the Europa League as well which has been really important to mention it's not all doom and gloom however uh, it is i think it's we've ran our course with jamie vardy playing every single game and this has only amplified it this season and made it more obvious that we don't have a backup um somebody said we could have done with gray and slim at the moment yes but that's what what can you do we wouldn't have expected to be here um so again with the two wingers that we've got in under that's one thing i wanted to come on to under is is we are not set we are not bringing him in at all are we alex no <laughs> you know and i think i said this last you know post match you know this is prime you know under time to shine you know barnes is out you know you're the next winger you would think you know the fact that he's not even getting slotted in coming in as a sub his time in leicester city is over you know mm-hmm. i i would be shocked to see him on the field at any point for the rest of the season and I know that's a pretty big statement, but I, I believe it. You know, with the amount of injuries that you have right now, you would you would expect you know plug in a winger when you lose a winger, and he's not yeah. plugged in. And I think that's the statement right there. You know, this would be prime time for him to shine, and under it all, no pun intended. Um, you know, he's just he's not being chosen, and um, it's as simple as that. And you know, I'm very glad that it was an option to buy. Because yes. you know, it gave us the opportunity to really look at him and see if he meshed well with the squad. And he clearly doesn't. He's more uh, of an attacking mindset and doesn't contribute to the defensive side of things. And he's very – and one of the other things that I've really picked up on him is that he, he holds onto the ball for way too long. And, um, yeah, perfectly said, he's selfish. You know, he, mm-hmm. he looked for the, you know, the star-studded goal rather than, you know, oh, um, you know, Nacho or Vardy is open. You know, I can make that pass. We can score. He goes, okay, how can I score from this angle? You know, and that's one of the things I've really noticed over the season whenever he does play is that far, he doesn't have the, um, he doesn't have the, he can't see from all angles where he, he's just, he's narrow. His, he, he looks at things in a narrow view, whereas, you know, a lot of other players have a much wider scope Um and you know that playmaking capacity he's very much attacking not the same mindset not the same forward thinking that you know Leicester City is so I'm glad that moving forward he'll just he'll go back to Roma and that'll be the end of it you know unfortunately because you know I I had high health grow uh but moving forward you know we just got to figure out what's going to happen yeah and I I think you're right in terms of what what else can we have done and we've we've given the opportunities come off the bench and towards the beginning of the season he was scoring some again against Arsenal brilliant run and cross in but I think his work off the ball as you were saying and his defensive side is something that a Brendan Rodgers side we we don't we need it to be better and he hasn't quite got that again it was his opportunity to shine with Barnes coming out of the team and if you look at a like for like replacement it does feel it does feel better. I think he will go on to do good things. However, maybe in the Bundesliga, in in maybe the Italian league would be another good example of it, where you're not playing, where you can kind of take a player on, like Mares used to do, take a player on. If it doesn't work, no matter, the team will cover him behind you. But in the Premier League, in the way that Brendan Rodgers wants to play, it's not going to happen. And again, we are glad that 
he's not com- he's not he's not going to be probably most likely he's not going to be bought this season and that can be we can use that for other players because bearing in mind Gray's gone out as well and now we've got Barnes out that'll leave us with under and it sorry it will leave us with um with all Brighton and Barnes that might be our only two wingers in the entire squad and that's definitely something we could we could we have to improve on but that'll be another conversation for the summer especially with the transfer windows and everything but Again, both teams hit the post. One again, the, the I think it was Westwood or Brownhill. I can't remember the, the name of the Burnley one, but that outside it was a from behind the goal. It looked beautiful as it was curving in. Then we hit the goal as Hillemans. It is an equal game overall. And Rich, I'm just ha- I'm glad that we've got something out of this. And also, I think I was saying this off off camera to Alex as well. It will be interesting to see from the fallout of this game how the media perceive this as either they could take it both ways they can go Leicester were brilliant Leicester were have loads of injuries they take a point away at Burnley fantastic or you could go what happened to Leicester is this big this is the downfall they lost one and now they drew one to Burnley all wheels are coming off the bandwagon so which way do you think it will go in that aspect I think it'll go different way altogether I think that they'll forget that Burnley played Leicester um, I think that they just played no one because obviously we don't exist uh, oh, to okay. anyone else, you know. So, um, you know, they'll just say Burnley Drew. Um, um, yeah, Burnley Drew, that'll be it. Um, yeah. No, it's, it could go either way. To be honest with you, it's it's one of those situations I don't really pay too much attention because I, I get so frustrated when I do because it's like you just said, it's usually, you know, less of the wheels are falling off. I mean, the, the so many, you often wonder whether it's just actually that they're following on from the vocal side yes. of Twitter and going right. Oh, that's the that you know they're the vocal. Um, you know that's the vocal area who are saying that Leicester have fallen off. I've seen it loads. I saw it. You know last week. Um, you know one of the Leicester fans and uh, and she put a tweet just saying, um, you know that's it. Top four gone. Uh, might as well give up now. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, like, what is wrong with you? It's just crazy. But I know why they're doing it, by the way. It's so that if we don't get top four, they can go, see, told you so. Yep. I was do, the first person. Yeah. yeah. But if we do, then it's great. They go, oh, brilliant. That's amazing. So it's just, it's being negative. So you can't be wrong. And it's like, yes. right, have, you know, just have a bit more about you than that. And now about show some, how about show some faith? How about show some support to your team? And let's just try and, you know, let's try and get on. So, it's it it was a it was a case of we did the best we could with the team we've got, um, and with the you know with the tired legs it was just it's just in you know, we, we look at it and we look back at the season if we get top four this season which I st- still strongly believe we will by the way mm-hmm. it is incredible yes. absolutely incredible with the amount of injuries we've constantly had it would be an incredible season and it would be you know it, obviously it's never going to go to the accolades of winning the Premier League and you know it shouldn't really. But, but to get there. us, yeah, it's up there. It is incredible with the amount of injuries we've had and to our top players. It's not as if we're losing players who are fringe players and we go, oh, it's a shame we haven't got a decent backup now. It's mm-hmm. that's our first team squad gone, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, no, if we if we can get top four with this season, which I truly believe we will, then I'll be, um, I will be absolutely over the moon and fair play to us. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm hoping for as well. It does put us in, again, another point towards that. Just as we said about the Wolves game, it was a nil-nil draw, but we got a point on the board rather than getting a win. It's still a good point, Alex, and moves us towards the right direction. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that I think a lot of fans forget. You know, I think a lot of people look at draws as a negative, you know, result. But you need to also consider the fact that, you know, it's still a point. It's still a point to our advantage. You know, if you look at the table right now, you know, we're sitting on 50 points, you know, that just pushes us a further point ahead in the top four, you know, and, you know, depending on what, you know, the results are later this week, when everyone else plays, you know, it, it could be huge, you know, if one team loses or another team loses, you know, it could really start separating that gap between, you know, fourth or fifth, you know, because we're still remaining in third place. So, you know, that, you know, you might see that four, five point gap turn into, you know, you know, with a win on Saturday, this weekend, you know, you could be looking at an eight-point gap or whatever. So I think you just need to remain optimistic and positive because it's so easy to yeah. look at a result like this and be like, you know, we, we tied. We got yeah. a point, but it's just it's not good enough. You know, you need to look at it being like we have been heavily, you know, dealing with injuries. We are not at full capacity. We are 
exhausted. These players are given 120 percent, you know, every game, and they're still and we're pulling out a result like this. I'm 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 very glad. You know, like I said before, we're at 50 points this season. You know, yeah, and, and yeah, sorry. We've played this entire year with injuries, you know, yes. and to say that we're still where we are. And, you know, an outcome, especially today with the lineup that we are currently playing with, it's fantastic. So just keep on looking at these draws as a positive um, because, you know, if, if we get if we get one this weekend, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly take two points out of these out of these two games, especially with our bare bone uh, squad right now. Yeah, and that, that's I think a good point to end on as well because it just we're just waiting for that result to kind of the the break to kind of hopefully just bring everything back together. Go right, rest, recoup because I think we were saying um, it, it's so easy to get lost and there was so much rubbish on Twitter about how we're terrible and stuff after the after the um, Arsenal game, which I get, but there was no nuance to it. There was no context to it. There was just people liking to complain, and I think that's. So that's kind of stupid in that instance to say, oh, well, um, we, we've lost, we're terrible. And everything just turns on as, as as quickly as Mark Albrighton turned today. You know, everything turns in that in that instance because it, it's not it's not good enough, but it, it, it's not good enough for people to say, in my opinion. So anyway, um, I've got one message just before because I don't think we're going to get time to do a pre, pre-match before Brighton. Um, um, I'll start with you, Rich. What, what are you thinking before this game? Because again, before until that game, then we've got the eight games rest. What do you what do you think? Go playing away to Brighton. I think we'll win that one. And I to be honest with you, I I I slightly disagree with Alex on that one. Because it's Brighton, I will see a loss, uh, sorry, a draw as a loss against Brighton with mm. our team. We've beat them in the FA Cup. We beat you know, I mean, we 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 can beat them. We can beat them seriously. Um today, Burnley, Burnley, I, I really rate Burnley. Really, yes, really. Too. I think they are an absolute workhorse of a team. And anyone that gets results against Burnley, fair play to you. They can have their off game, as anyone can, but I rate them. Brighton, we've got their number. We can beat them. We are the better squad. We are just the better team with the better squad. And I think that I I think that we've, you know, we've got those those few days rest. I know it's nothing special, but you know, I think we will do it. So for me, I would take the four points out of the two games. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I, I'd be dis. I lot if we draw that one or lose, especially, I will be disappointed. But I, I see us. I see us winning it. I see us doing okay. Um, I think we've got um, we've got enough in our um, enough in our arsenal to uh, to 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 pull that one out of the bag and get the result. And then, like you say, have the rest, recuperate, get James Madison back. He's due to be back on the grass by the weekend. Not obviously, Ooh. he won't be ready for the weekend. But uh, Brendan Rodgers is saying he's hopefully getting him out on the grass. So, you know, doing a light training and movement stuff by the weekend. So we should hopefully have him back soon. So for me, yeah, let's get this um that let's just let's just get these uh, these players back in and, and yeah, we should win it. We should get it. And another player as well, Dennis Pratt, who's again a complete it is one of the biggest losses, especially when other teams have pulled out because the versatility of him and the legs in him. Hopefully again the same thing that Rich was saying, they said about Fafana for this game, that he was just warming up and getting back in the team. So again, hopefully that can bring the best out of, um, if Pratt returns as well, that, that will be that will be brilliant as well. Um, what, what Over to you, Alex, before we finish, just again, just what are your thoughts on the Brighton match and what do you think we can get out of the game? I think we can win it. You know, I, I when I did say, you know, if we get a draw, you know, I'll take it. You know, I do want, want the win. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think we can win, uh, no problem. Even with, you know, with all these injuries, we always seem to have Brighton's number. Um, but I'm extremely, you know, I, I hate predicting. That's one of my biggest things that I hate predicting. But I, I still think that we can be Brighton, not a problem. I'm hoping that we can see younger players take the pitch. That's one thing that I'm hoping we can see from this game, you know, because there's part of me that says, you know, line up, you know, play the best starting 11 you can, you know, but at the same time, we don't have them. We no, no, I don't. <laughs> that's the thing. But if you could sub, you know, but in a game like this, if you can give the opportunity to some of the some of the younger players, I would take that advantage. If you could rest some of your older players who've been gassed this entire, you know, for the last couple of weeks, an extra day off. So, you know, I'm I'm feeling confident. You know, I think 
today was the game that I ultimately believe that if, if we lost Burnley in a way where we didn't deserve it at all, I would be concerned against Brighton. But I think the way that we performed today against Burnley, we should have no issue against Brighton. Yes. It could um, have been a lot worse, in my yeah. opinion. A lot worse of a performance. And exactly. the fact that the team was willing to grind out and fight for the manager because they could have threw in the towel, kind of like they did against Arsenal. Yes. So it's very easy to say that, but yeah, again, we are we are we could talk for another half an hour. And we've already got to forty five minutes. So thank you for every, the nine of you that have stayed on this long. We really really appreciate it because it it again we could talk about this forever. But I'm just concerned that we're getting a bit too much. But I'd like to thank Rich and Alex once again. Their Twitters, everything will be in the description down below. If you haven't already, like subscribe and thank you for making it so far and all the support you've given us over over the over the past season. Thank you for 300 subscribers as well. We really appreciate it. And we'll see everybody in the next video. So goodbye.